Thanks, Osama. Uh, so, uh, my name's Kim Marriott, uh, and this is work with my colleagues, Leona Holloway and Matt Butler, uh, who are also from Monash University in Australia. And uh, as Osama said, what we're, the primary contribution of this work is to, to compare um, tactile maps with uh, 3D printed maps uh, for uh, orientation and mobility training. Um, but I will speak briefly about a case study also into the use of audio labels with 3D prints. So, uh, as we've discussed, um, difficulty and fear of independent travel is one of the greatest disabling consequences of blindness and severe vision impairment. Um, and to help th with this, um, people with severe vision impairment are often provided with orientation, orientation and mobility training by specialists. Um, and they teach them techniques for independent travel as well as uh, helping them walk new routes and uh, investigate local environments when they need to travel. Within Australia and in other countries, um, raised line drawings called tactile graphics um, may be used as part of this process. Um, these are uh, used as an adjunct to following the route and the, the idea is that they help the person to provide context and to build up a, a mental overview of the entire area in its layout, not just the particular route that they need to follow to get to their location. And these are printed on small paper, embossed paper or thermoform. And they're reasonably flat. Now, recently 3D uh, printed models have emerged as an alternative to tactile graphics. While handmade 3D models have been used for centuries, um, really they haven't been used very often because of the prohibitive cost of manufacturing. But commodity 3D printers uh, have changed this and now a 3D print costs uh, pretty much the same as a tactile graphic to produce. So in some cases there are obvious benefits for using a 3D model rather than a tactile graphic for when you're showing inherently three-dimensional information. So the example there um, is a, when you're showing something like a building like the Sydney Opera House, uh, the 3D print is much easier to understand for a blind person than the elevation. Uh, this is also true for, uh, say, molecules or anatomy. And so for this reason, there's been widespread interest uh, by educators for using um, 3D prints to teach STEM subjects. But the question that we're interested in is, uh, do the 3D models offer benefits for 2D or essentially 2D materials like maps or plans? So we uh, did a literature review and this revealed uh, quite a divergence of opinions about this. So we have from Agarwal uh, in 2014, some concepts can be more precisely and easily portrayed using tactile graphics such as maps uh, than with 3D prints. Uh, and a survey in 2005 of um, blind vision impaired adults found that tactile maps were preferred to handmade 3D models. Uh, but some researchers advocate the use of 3D prints for floor plans and maps, Voigt and Martins, Gaul, etc., et al., I mean. Um, so we also uh, scoured the literature to find out if there'd been any comparative studies of tactile maps and 3D models. Um, we found um, two related studies um, and they compared um, they were interested in whether using 3D helped uh, with recognition of abstract uh, symbols. And the controlled study found that a mixture of 2D and 3D volumetric abstract symbols on a 3D printed map could be found more quickly and more accurately uh, on a map legend than if you just used 2D symbols alone. But this is a fairly narrow task. Uh, what we were interested in, or what we didn't find, is that there were any controlled study directly comparing 3D models with tactile maps and plans for the sort of the higher level orientation and mobility tasks. So that's what we decided to investigate. I should clarify that the study here uh, was using abstract symbols, not uh, symbols that represented the, the objects that they were denoting. So uh, what I'm going to do now is to describe our two pilot studies and then spend a fair bit of time on the controlled studies before looking at the interactive labels. So in our first pilot study, uh, we um, presented a wide variety of different 3D models, uh, 
not all of which were maps and plans, but uh, certainly maps and plans, cityscapes, floor plans, street maps, and with their tactile graphic equivalent, to 21 severely vision impaired adults. And uh, we were really unexpectedly surprised by how strong the preference was for the 3D maps and plans rather than the tactile graphics. Um, and typical, typical comments were things like, the buildings raised up helps because I'm not used to reading maps. And without prompting, many uh, participants indicated their potential use in orientation and mobility training. This finding was supported in a second study uh, where we uh, showed, uh, again, maps and plans uh, with their tactile graphic equivalents to this time to 25 accessible format providers, teachers and vision impaired users. And again, there was a strong preference for the, the 3D models. So we decided to conduct a controlled study to investigate uh, if or what the, the tangible benefits might be of 3D models over the tactile graphics. And um, based on the participant comments in the pilot studies, we had three hypotheses. The first was that 3D iconic symbols, uh, so what I mean by an iconic symbol is where the symbol um, is, uh, represents uh, the, the object that it denotes, uh, is similar to it. Um, whether these could, we thought that the 3D um, iconic symbols and features would be more easily understood than their 2D equivalent. Uh, we also thought that the relative height of objects in the 3D model uh, will be more easily understood than on the 2D model, so which will provide some performance advantage, and that it would be easier to construct a detailed mental model using the 3D map as reflected in better recall of features and layout. Um, the secondary part of the study was we were interested in also to compare hand movements used to read the tactile and 3D maps to find out if there were differences or what, the, uh, what differences there might be. So materials for the study, um, we created uh, a 3D printed model and tactile graphic equivalent of two um, parks and two simple railway stations. So the figure shows um, one of the parks and one of the railway stations uh, in the two forms. And the parks were designed to investigate uh, whether 3D iconic symbols like those shown, you can see a tree, and a monument and a slide were going to be easier to understand than their 2D uh, equivalent. And the, the train station, um, that was uh, designed to investigate whether um, the 3D model aided understanding of features like this raised pedestrian bridge uh, where elevation is important, uh, which of course connected the, uh, the various platforms. So we had 16 participants, uh, six adult, adult touch readers, uh, two had low level vision, four had some visual memory, and 10 were uh, congenitally blind. Um, and the procedure uh, was as follows. First uh, training, uh, participants were shown um, side by side a 3D model and a tactile graphic map of a small neighborhood and asked similar questions to those that they were going to be asked in the study proper. Um, then they were shown the two playground maps, one as a tactile graphic, one as a 3D print. Then shown the two train station maps, one as a tactile graphic, one as a 3D print, and there was a post-study questionnaire. Uh, participant hand movements were videotaped. And of course, the presentation of tactile graphics and 3D prints was counterbalanced. So um, for each tactile graphic and 3D print, um, they were asked to explore it and to verbally request clarification or confirmation of the symbols they were not sure of so that we could understand uh, which symbols they found uh, easier to understand. Then the map was removed and the participants were asked questions to test recall. The map was then returned and participants were asked to complete two route following tasks. Then they were asked questions me measuring their level of enjoyment, uh, detail in mental representation, effort in understanding, and how well the map held their attention. And after each tactile 3D print pair, they were asked which format they preferred and why. At the end, they were asked did they use different techniques to explore the two formats, what they might be, and which format gave them the most detailed mental picture. Then, uh, and 
this hadn't been told to the participants. They were asked to describe the two parks that they had been shown at the start of the study. Um, and just, the reason for this is we wanted to uh, understand um, how the format presentation affected longer term recall. So what did we find? Uh, user preference, well, self-reported preference for the 3D models over tactile graphics was um, yeah, statistically significant, um, strong preference. Uh, they tended to use in the training exercise the 3D model to answer route finding questions rather than the, um, the, the tactile graphic. Um, but there was little difference in self-reported enjoyment of ex exploration or of the degree of attention holding of the two formats, between the two formats. Um, in terms of understandability, the self-reported level of effort for understanding was less for the 3D model, um, and there was less need to request help identifying or confirming the symbols in the 3D models. And typical comments were things like, the 3D model is much more realistic, the symbolic stuff just makes sense. There was a modest improvement on route finding for the multi-level train station, but this was not statistically significant. Um, however, there were comments that suggested that it, it, uh, supporting that it was easier. Things like, that makes more sense seeing the bridge go up, whereas the 2D was confusing. Uh, in hindsight, probably the route finding tasks we chose for the um, train station were a little bit too difficult. Um, in terms of mental models and recall, uh, self-reported level of detail in the mental model was uh, greater for the 3D model. Uh, comments like, I felt like I was walking through it using the, when they were using the 3D model support this. Um, though for both, partic both formats, participants were able to build a dental, detailed mental model of the map. Um, there was a modest gain in short-term recall uh, with the 3D model, but no difference in the longer-term recall. And one of the things was uh, a number of participants had difficulty remembering if they'd actually seen the, the original map as uh, a tactile graphic or as a um, 3D model, which suggests that they've encoded them in the same way in, in the longer term memory. Um, so how does that relate back to our hypotheses? Well, um, there, there is support for our first hypothesis that the 3D iconic symbols and features can be understood more easily than their 2D equivalent. Uh, there's limited support that the relative height of objects is easier to understand in the 3D model than the 2D model. Um, and uh, there was some support that it's easy to construct a detailed mental model using a 3D map and support for short term recall, but not for longer term recall. So, that's all for the controlled study. Um, in our study, uh, we did not provide labels, except for the braille labels numbering the platforms, because we wanted to see how well the symbols um, could be understood. However, usually, usually we need to provide labels on maps. At, as Anki has already discussed, there are lots of good reasons to provide audio labels rather than braille labels. It means non-braille readers can use them, um, provision of different levels of detail, and labels to, can be updated dynamically. Also, with 3D printing, it's actually difficult to print uh, Braille labels with uh, the right degree of legibility. So, obviously, we're not the first to look at um, the provision of audio labels, Xi et al, Brule et al, um, Girard et al, etc. Um, what we were particularly interested in is how to provide uh, low cost um, audio labels using you know, off the shelf electronic components. Uh, so, to explore this, um, we conducted a case study, a campus map, um, using uh, blind students on our campus as uh, participants in the, the participatory design of the, the, the um, interactive map to further investigate this. Um, what did we learn from this? Probably in hindsight things that we should have uh, already known, but uh, firstly that the label needs to be triggered explicitly by the, the user, it needs to be under user control. Um, secondly. Uh, you need to allow the user to control different levels of detail. And thirdly, the labels need to be small and not obscure um, the underlying label or the underlying model so that that can be explored easily. Um, and we did find that participants overwhelmingly liked audio labels. Okay, so in conclusion, we found evidence that 3D printed models uh, offer benefits over the current use of tactile graphics in orientation and mobility training. Uh, this is because the iconic 3D symbols are easier to understand than 2D. They uh, evoke a more vivid mental image. 
uh, and they do improve short-term recall, uh, though we found no evidence for longer-term recall, and they may help in understanding relative heights. I've, we've been really pleased by the amount of interest in our work by the blind and vision impaired community in Australia. Um, there's a sense that there's a potential to really change current practice and make a difference. Uh, so we're starting collaboration with two orientation and mobility training providers to evaluate the use of 3D printed maps in practice. Uh, we're also testing the interactive maps in two case studies. Uh, Vision Australia have refurbished their offices, so they're providing uh, interactive maps to, to help visitors navigate the new space, and we're also starting to use them on our campus. Um, we plan to have further studies to investigate if 3D printed models help understanding and navigation in more complex environments, multi-level environments like train stations and shopping centres. Um, and I'm just going to quickly advertise something. Um, this is a picture of my local beach. Um, uh, we now have 50, we're, well, we're looking to appoint something like 50 academics. Uh, not all of these are in HCI, but many of them will be in HCI. So if you want to go somewhere that's warm, has nice beaches, and is far away from northern hemisphere politics, please come and talk to me afterwards. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Uh, again, if there are any questions, if you could line uh, behind the mic in the middle of the room, please tell us who you are before you ask a question. If you need the mic to come to you, please just raise your hand. Hi, uh, Ugni Nicolau, University of Lisbon, Portugal. So I have two uh, simple questions. The first one, uh, maybe I didn't, I didn't get it from your talk. How did you measure long-term recall? Uh, so, the, so it was longer-term recall. Uh, so, uh, sorry. So the longer-term recall was the question at the end of the study. So after an hour, we asked them, uh, without having prepared them for this, just what they could remember of the first two models that they'd been shown. One hour afterwards. Yeah. Oh. So obviously, it'd be great to go to try longer term recall, but th the second that was one is: Did you try to measure like transfer skills? So what they learn using the map, if they could apply in the real world uh, and navigate a map? No, we, that that would be an, another study. Sure, thank you. There are more time for questions. Maybe. I have a question. I wonder uh, about um, individual differences again in terms of um, uh, uh, map exploration uh, strategies. Did you notice that people maybe use different strategies to explore a 2D gra uh, gra uh, map versus a 3D map? I'm glad you asked that question. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what did we find? Um, oh, the right. main finding were, was that, yes, different strategies were used. Um, and uh, six of the 16 participants self-reported that they used different strategies. Uh, our observation was that um, if with 3D models, people more frequently place their hands on top of the model to try and feel it to get an overview, um, and there was a statistically significant difference there. Um, we were, had been a little worried that people wouldn't explore the 3D model as systematically as they explore a 2D graphic because of the unevenness, etc. But there was no, no indication of that. Um, however, we did get some uh, criticism of our, one of our models because the, the trees were quite spiky, so it was uncomfortable to do that exploration. Thanks. Any other questions? <laughs> 